Elizabeth Church home worship service. Here we are at St. John's, the Evangelist Episcopal Church Rectory, and we're so glad to come into your home today. Thank you for that privilege. We pray that you are staying safe, washing your hands, covering up your faces, but greeting everyone in the name of Jesus with a smile and a twinkle in your eye, knowing that this too shall pass. If you have a loved one or if you yourself have COVID-19, please know God is still in the healing business. We have some wonderful people uh, in the medical field who are working hard and diligently to find a cure. We want to thank our bus drivers, our train uh, operators, our police department, our fire department, our nurses and doctors, and all of you who make it possible for us to stay at home and to be safe here in New York. Our service begins today with our acclamation, and this service is being offered up in celebration of the life that we will now have, a life that we will continue to have, and a life that is blessed by God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. shepherd of your people. Grant that we hear his voice, we may know him who calls each of us by name, and follow where he leads, 
who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Verily I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out on his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follows him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying. So again, Jesus said to them, Verily I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandit, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. But the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty and ever giving God, we thank you for being the Good Shepherd, for leading us down the way of your righteousness, for encouraging our hearts, for helping us to remember, Lord God, you are in control of our lives, our health, our well-being, our very, the very air that we breathe. We thank you. Be with us now, O oh Lord, as we study your word in these difficult times. Help us to remember that we need you to survive. You're all calling us as a good shepherd to follow you. And although these times in which we are in crisis, we know this too shall pass. Let us be that good neighbor. Let us be that holy presence in this time of this pandemic. We don't know why you call folks home that you do but we do know Lord that they are going to a better place we do know Lord God that you still are gonna hold our hands and comfort us and we do know God you're in the midst of our lives be with us now oh Lord as we study your word and we write it upon our hearts may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you my Lord my God and my Redeemer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church and all of our friends, wherever you may be. God bless you. and Thank you for allowing us the privilege to come into your home. And in case no one has told you today, or maybe no one has told you all week, but let me be the first one to tell you that God loves you this morning and so do we.
God loves you and so do I. Oh, God bless you. I want you to find somebody in your household, even if you got to look in the mirror, and say, God loves you and I'm glad that I'm here with you. Amen. God loves you and I'm glad God loves you're you and I'm glad I'm here with you. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. And you know, although our churches may be closed, the building is closed, but Jesus is open for business. Amen. To giving us hope. To giving us what we need to survive and to leading us into the way of his love. We are his sheep and, and sometimes we are the shepherds. Our gospel this morning is filled of images of sheep and shepherds and being led. And where are we going? I know for many of us we are somewhat confused about why hasn't God showed up yet. Well, I'm just telling you God is working on your story. God is working on my story. God is developing a path so that we can be better people. And we can be that agent of peace. We can be that agent of love. We can be that which God has called us to be. In our gospel lesson, we see that Jesus and John is going out, telling everyone about the good shepherd. He's talking about how you have to go right through the gate. You can't jump over the gate. You can't go around the gate. You can't go underneath the gate. You have to go right through the gate, right through the gateway. Now, we understand that he's speaking in figures of speech. But, you know, that's why we have to go through what we have to go through. See, sometimes in life, we get to go over the mountain or go over the crisis. We get to go under the crisis. Or sometimes we can even by step and go around the crisis. But there are times, like today, like in these times, we just have to go through this crisis. We just have to trust God. We just have to hold on and know that when we go through that gate, and we look down that path, God is leading us down a path of love, a path of blessings, a path of strength, a path in which we'll be able to take somebody with us in God's love. It's all about love, my brothers and sisters. But here's the reality. We need each other. I know we are in a time which we are being led by the Good Shepherd down that path of love, but we need each other. We need one another. We need to talk to each other. We need to reach out to our neighbors who may be ill, but we can talk to them on the phone. I was so disturbed in my heart this week and almost broke because I learned that some folks that I know very well, their household had contracted COVID-19. And as they began to tell people, folks began to hang up on them. They began to shun them. It was almost a, as though we were back in the days of Jesus when people had leprosy. They, they wanted to put them in a, their own community so that no one else would get infected. Now, now, let me just say that these are good folks. The whole family had, contact, had contracted it. And actually, their son had gotten so ill that they had been refused by three hospitals until finally they found someone in urgent care that was willing to help them so their, their son would be able to live. What is wrong with us today? We're refusing help to people that need it. What is wrong with us today? Don't we know we need each other? We need to be there for one another. There's so many times in life when we could be turned away. But in these times, I'm praying that our nurses and doctors, our administrators in the hospital, will recognize those that need to be helped and not turn them away. Our heart is broken for this family. I hadn't heard from them in about three weeks. I had been calling. I had been texting. I had been trying to Zoom. I, I could not get a hold of them. I've known this family for many, many, many years. And finally, I, I got a hold of, uh, of the wife and the mother. And she said to me, you know, uh, Mother Collins, I, I didn't call you because we were in crisis. And we began to share with people what had happened. Folks had just shunned us away. And we had to turn our attention to our son, who had been the most sick of all of us, and make him well. And I'm glad to tell you, Mother Collins, he's well. He's doing good. And we all have been healed from this awful disease. Are we following the way of the Good Shepherd? 
Oh, I'm not asking you to go to somebody's house that has the disease, that has that have been diagnosed positive with COVID-19. But I am asking you to call them and offer them a prayer. I am asking you to write them a note, send them a text, email them, fa FaceTime them, get in touch with them, let them know you're praying for them. I am asking you to be that good shepherd and to walk with those that others don't want to walk with. My heart broke this week again. St. John's, we had to say farewell to two of our folks. Dr. Teresita Watkins was called on to glory, lived a full life. God had called her home. She's in a place now where there's no sorrow, no sickness, no Alzheimer's. And she doesn't have to lay in the bed anymore. She, she's up and running around heaven. But I think the one that really broke my heart was, was our dear little Gabby that we've been praying for. I don't have an answer. But God saw it fit. She had, had contacted uh, COVID-19 some four and a half weeks ago. And God called her and her unborn child home last week. Just last Saturday. And we're reaching out to her family now. We're wrapping our arms around her family. And, and may the souls of the faithful departed, especially Teresita and Gabby and the unborn child, rest in peace rise in glory, but we're wrapping our arms around them. We're going to be with them. We're going to walk with them. We're going to pray with them. We're going to write them. We're going to find out what they need and have supplies delivered to them. We're there for them because that's what we do for one another if we are loving in Jesus' name. How can we turn away when the shepherd calls us? How can we turn away from one another when we're in trouble. Are you in trouble today? You know, God is not asleep. I still believe that this is a test. That God is seeing what, where our faith is. You know, faith is, Hebrews 11, 1 says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Can you see your blessing? Can you see the healing? Can you see it in the future that we are going to be a better community? Can you see your neighbor? Have you called somebody lately to see how they're doing? Does that take any time out of your day? For us here in New York, I have to tell you that as I looked at our calendar, we are now on our 57th day of being locked in. We go out. I'm very blessed. We, we have a yard and we rearrange the basement for our five-year-old and I run out to the store early in the morning, you know, to get that senior special time. But have you said something nice to somebody? Have you called your neighbor to find out how they're doing? It doesn't matter how long you've been shut in. There's nothing wrong with our hearts that we can't call somebody and pray with them. And my brothers and sisters, if we ever needed prayer, we need it today. I don't know about you, but I need you. God needs you. And we need to follow together, arm in arm, hand in hand, and heart in heart. Follow the Good Shepherd. I'm so pleased with St. John Evangelist Outreach and brave souls that had gone out to help the AKA collect dry goods for those that don't have any food. We had a, a bunch of our folks. I want to thank Pam and Marcia and Christina and those that, that have been involved with it, that went that, went out and and gave dry goods. It wasn't a big thing. They put on a mask and glove and they, they went and got some soup and, and they went and got some rice and they went and got some flour and they drove up and put it on the sidewalk and drove away. They weren't in contact with anybody. And the folks from the, 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 the food bank came out and picked it up and took it inside and they're going to give it to those that are in need. I'm not asking you to put your life in danger. I'm asking you to be a good shepherd. I'm asking you to be a follower of Jesus. I'm asking you to be that prayer partner that somebody needs. There's somebody in a nursing home right now that needs a good word from the Lord. We can't go see them, but we can call them. We may not be able to do anything else. I've got a five-year-old. We've got her drawing pictures and sending them out to people just to make them smile. we got to hold on in these times because we need to survive with Jesus. God is sending his Holy Spirit down right now on each and every one of us to be the survivors, to be the sheep. Oh, and sometimes even be the shepherd. Are you following him today? We need to follow Jesus. 
I'm always reminded of one of our parishioners, Lester Chaplin, may he rest in peace. An older fella, a good looking dapper guy, had me laughing all the time. Was going through chemotherapy. Only person I know that went through chemotherapy and grew a beard. Normally you go through chemotherapy and you often lose your hair, but he grew a whole beard. And on his way back from chemotherapy, he would tell me, Mother Collins, I want you to know I, I stopped by and saw one of our sick and shut in. And I would say, but listen, you just had chemotherapy, brother. You're tired. You needed to go home and rest. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I may be tired. I may be weary. I may be sick. But you know, there's somebody else that's sicker than me that needs to have a good word. I just went by and said hello and said a prayer and offered them a bottle of water. And we just sat and chat for a minute and meant the whole world to them and to me. Have you reached out? I'm asking you this week, not only to be the sheep to follow the example of Jesus, but to be the shepherd. I want you to be that shepherd that gathers people, not in person, but gathers people on the phone. Gather them through Zoom. Gather them through Facebook. Gather them through Instagram. Gather them through writing letters. Gather them through, you got kids, make them draw pictures. Send out the photos to folks. Let them know that God loves them, and so do you. And if you do these things, I know God will bless you. God will heal you. God will keep you safe as we continue to be agents of peace and ambassadors of God's love in an unbelievable world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
our brothers and sisters in Christ, please join me as we reaffirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer to God our concerns for the church and the world with the humility of Jesus showed in his life and death. That our celebration of the Paschal ministry will deepen our faith and lead us to be unafraid to share the good news of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer that leaders of nations will seek nonviolent ways to settle differences for peace throughout the world and for an end to war, violence, prejudice, and hate. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That led by your Spirit through these holy days, we may deepen our desire to empty ourselves in service to our troubled world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and all who have asked of our prayers, especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus, may they find comfort and hope in the image of Christ, the suffering servant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. May they rest in the arms of a loving God for their families and friends that their grief may not overwhelm them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We invite your prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings at this time. We'd like to add to our list of the prayers of the people, those who are sick, fighting COVID-19, who are receiving treatment for cancer or are on dialysis or are simply in isolation. We especially remember Ian, Toy, Andre, Anne, Noel, Marie, um, those who are sick with COVID-19, the nurses and doctors who are still healing them with God's grace, Gail, Mary, Bernice, Pat, Noel, Elise, another Noel who's now uh, on, on a ventilator and is in critical condition. May God give him a special blessing. We ask you to remember those whom God has called home. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We especially remember those that have left us from St. John's family. Uh, Dr. Tara Cedar Watkins. Gabriella, Gab, Gabby, Gail, and Baby, Carson, Marshall, Andre, Renoir, Juan O'Hurl, Yancey, No Beard, Eva Beard, Bonnie Dudley, Edwin McDonald, Bernice Thompson, James Byrne, Baron, Carrie Bradley, Remy Jennings, Sheila Williams. Carson, Antonio Chekhov, and Louise Benoit's son. 
may they rest in peace. May God right. receive them in the heavenly kingdom. And may they rise in glory. We want to give God thanks this morning for all of those that have been healed. We especially remember Darren. Uh, we remember all of those who have uh, been healed and have returned home and Karen. Uh, we remember Pet and Ron who continue to be healed. We remember uh, Pat. We remember Joan who is in the process of being healed. We remember Alice and Dolores. We thank God for Cuddy who is receiving treatment and is, will be healed from cancer. We thank God for all of those who continue on the front lines to be the scientists and to make sure that people become well as a result of this disease. But we especially remember today Roy Watkins and the Watkins family, the Jackson family, Elsie Jackson. And remember all of those who have said farewell to their loved ones. We have a special prayer for their families. May God bless them and keep them and send an angel of comfort to be with them in this time of saying farewell to their loved ones. Let us pray. Almighty and all loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray to you through Jesus the healer for those who suffer from COVID-19 in Ireland, America, and across the world. We too pray for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who has died as a result of contacting this disease. Give wisdom to the policymakers, skill to the healthcare professional researchers, comfort to all in distress, and a sense of calm to all these, to all those in these days of uncertainty and distress. And this we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human race. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through us our struggle of confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth. Then in all your good time, all nations and races, may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray also to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and love of concord, to you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. 
Defend us, your humble servants, as we as the assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in our in your defense, we may not fear the power of any adversities through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us safely into this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. But in all that we do, direct us to fulfill your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want you to stay tuned right now. Our very own Hallelujah Kids and Sunday School have a special message and we've got a special guest. So don't go away. Listen up. They'll be here in five. St. John the Evangelist Virtual Sunday School. I'm Miss Barbara and I want you to repeat after me. Much prayer. Much prayer. Much power. Much power. Little prayer. Little power. No prayer. No prayer. No power. Teach us, Lord. Teach us, Lord. How to pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> so, with you today are the Hallelujah Kids. Oh, oh Groovy. <laughs> So, we want to give a special shout out to all of those having special birthdays, and especially Ellie, Ellie has an announcement or she wants to make a greeting to her mommy. My mommy's birthday is next week. Happy birthday, mommy! Okay, so today we're going to talk about our special guest and about love and uh, the Good Shepherd. We have someone that's going to tell us all about love, but first, Kelly, what do you think love is? I think love is when my mommy gives me candy and she takes me to the nail salon. I think that's love. Yeah, ha 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 Okay. Ellie, Ellie. Uh, Ellie, what do you think love is? I think love is when, my, when I got a boo-boo, my mommy takes care of me. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I know exactly what love is, but I think it's... I get lots of hugs and kisses, and I think that's what my mommy and daddies and my grandma, that's what they mean that they love me. But there's somebody here that can tell us all about love. Yeah, so our special guest today is Ta -da, the Bishop of the Diocese of Long Island. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Hi, Bishop. Hi, Bishop. My name is Kelly, and I'm so glad to meet you. Hi, Hi Kelly. Mother Earl. They call me Groovy, but it's so nice to meet you, Bishop. You know, we dudes got to stick together. <laughs> Emma, I'm Emily. Yay! So, Bishop, I'm going to talk because I do most of the talking. I'm the smartest one of all these kids. No, you're not. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about love today, and we want to know, what's love? Wow, that's a great question. Thank you. So, so what is love? Love is our devotion and our care and our being careful for the people around us. Uh, it is, the, it is what, what the whole power of our relationship with God is all about, binding us together together having us have a mind that, and a heart that allows us to understand what people are going through, uh, uh, to have empathy with them, which is to be careful about their needs and the concerns, and to put them before ourselves. Oh, well, well, let me talk. I want to talk to him too. Okay. Oh, oh, Bishop, well, when my mommy gets mad at me because I, I don't do what she says, does that mean she still loves me even when she's mad? She absolutely loves you. And matter of fact, when she gets mad, it probably means that she's concerned so much because of her love that she wants to make sure that you are safe and that you are behaving yourself so that way you're being respectful of the people around you. Oh, that's good to know, Mom. That's good to know because when she gets mad at me, I get mad at her and I want to fuss and cry. And she says, I love you. No, that's me. She says, I love you, but we don't know when mommies and daddies get mad if they still love us. But to hear you say that, that makes me feel so much better. What's a they bishop have... anyway? What's a bishop anyway? Who, who are you? What, what is I don't go to church. Who are you? Well, yeah. bishops are, bishops are uh, people who are in the midst of the community that is the church and uh, bishops are, are uh, direct, have a direct connection to the apostles that follow Jesus Christ. Ooh. And they are Ooh. teachers and pastors Ooh. amongst God's people. And they, they help direct and support the work of all the clergy and all the churches around the world. Wow. So you're their boss, right? Well, I'm... Sometimes act like their boss, but most of the time I'm just another servant. Okay, but well, I saw you with a big stick one day. I was at your church, Church of the Cathedral, Incarnation, in Garden City, and I saw you with this big stick. Is that what you use to keep all those priests in line? Yeah, he makes the priests with no <laughs> money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they're no. bad. Yeah. yeah, so is that for yeah. them? So if you remember what the stick looks like, it has a curved top. It looks like it is a shepherd's stick or a shepherd's crook, it's called. And the symbolism, the thing it symbolizes, is holding people in close connection with each other. So the way people begin to stray away, the Ooh. bishop can reach out and pull them back. Wow! That's what? like the good shepherd of Jesus this week. Excuse me, excuse me. That's like the good shepherd of Jesus this week. Jesus is a good shepherd. Is it like that? It is exactly like that. The example is that the good shepherd keeps an eye out for all of the sheep and makes sure that they stay together and they're safe and cared for and stay as a group moving together. Uh, if you've ever seen a shepherd... You know that the shepherd doesn't walk out ahead of people and the shepherd doesn't walk behind them. The shepherd s stands right in the midst of all the sheep and keeps them in, in, in closeness with each other. Wow, oh, that's pretty cool. That sounds like a hard yeah. job. Yeah, because yeah, some people don't want to follow directions like my sister Kelly. No, she follows directions. You don't follow directions. You'll be mindful of the bishop now. He's our good shepherd. Yeah. So well, and you know what? Sometimes what? being a good shepherd means being a good example. So that way you don't, it, you shouldn't always have to tell people how to behave. You should be able to show them how to behave. And so a shepherd sometimes has to do that by being a good example to everyone around them and asking everyone else around them to be good shepherds for each other. Oh, well, can I? I'm just a little kid. Can I be a good shepherd too? 
You absolutely can by wow. being by by behaving in terms of of your relationships with people, being kind and gentle and loving and giving to the people around you. You can kind of look out to make sure that if if someone is is possibly going to get hurt or maybe involved in something they shouldn't be involved in, you can always encourage them to come back and be a part of 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 the larger group moving in in the right direction. Oh, I'm just too little to be a shepherd, Bishop. I'm just a little. Baby, they're always picking on me too. Can I be a good shepherd? You absolutely could be a good shepherd, and particularly yeah. by loving each other. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, well, you said that Jesus loved us. Is there ways that, that you help people, like right now in COVID 19? Are we helping people? We absolutely are. Every one of us, beginning by staying home. And, and, and staying away from large crowds of people and, and being careful about covering our faces when we cough and sneeze and all of, those, all of those things that we're being asked to do, just by doing them, we're, be, we're behaving like the good shepherd. We're being a part of a whole process of keeping people safe. So one of the best things we can do, particularly in this COVID-19 time, is for us to stay home, be careful about the way we move about when we have to and be careful about when we sneeze or cough or any of those kinds of things. So that's the beginning of it. Secondly, we can be careful about our use of, of things like all the products in our homes, all the things that we need. We can be very careful about our use of things, including food and water and, oh. and uh, the things that uh, protect God's people. Well, we're staying at home, but but I have a question, Bishop. In all this time, I'm kind of scared. What should I do? I'm kind of scared. Of, I cry sometimes at night because I don't know what to do. And I say, "Mommy, Daddy, they're worried." Okay. Well, here's the thing: we're we're all worried, but here here's the thing about being scared. There's no real reason to be scared because as long as we're following the directions that we're we're getting from um, uh, local government and doctors and hospital and healthcare people, as long as we follow their directions, we know that we should be safe. And to follow the directions that are, are given to us by our family members and the people who we're in, at home with, uh, we're all going to be okay. It's going to take a little bit of time and it's going to take a lot of prayer and a lot of creativity like we're doing today using this online uh, uh, means of communicating with each other, but if I think if we follow, we all follow the rules. We're going to be okay. Yeah, I ride my bike in the basement. That's what I do. I ride around in circles, but I'm tired of riding around. In I won't go outside. I know we all want to get outside soon enough, but if we if we go outside, we know we have to wear a mask. And we have to stay about six feet away from everyone, okay. and being very careful about about not interacting with people who might be. Uh, uh, contracted the virus, uh, but in the meantime, being very creative is a good way of being a good shepherd as well. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah, I like that. One of the other things I would suggest to all of you is uh, if there are people in your life that you'd like to communicate with, you yeah. can call them on the phone, you oh, can use a computer yeah. to be in contact with them, yeah. and you know there's a really old-fashioned way of communicating with people, you can write them a note. Ooh, okay, oh, those are, oh, boy, those are good like ideas, fun. Bishop. I make a picture. I draw a picture. Yeah, yeah, I can. Drawing do. pictures, drawing pictures is a really good way of communicating, letting people know that you care for them and that you're thinking about them and that you're praying for them. Wow. I like that idea. I like to draw. I like to draw pictures of how I feel sometimes. I draw pictures that are scary, and that's just me feeling on the inside, expressing myself. I don't want to be afraid. Those words are so comforting. Thank you. You're my man. I got a joke. I got a joke. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Okay. I got a joke. I got a joke. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boom. Boom who? I made you cry. <laughs> I made you cry. <laughs> I, got, I got another joke for you. I got another joke for you. Go ahead. Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? 
Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange. Orange, you glad you didn't say banana. <laughs> 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 so you know what? Can I share something with you? Yeah, please, 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 yeah, please Bishop. You'll be quiet. I want to hear the Bishop. No, I want to hear the Bishop. You can this, have This has been so much fun for me. You've made me laugh, and you made me uh, uh, to tell some stories. This has been really a good thing for me today. You've helped lift my spirits and brought some real, uh, real light into my day. And so I'm very grateful to all of you for being really good shepherds today. Thank you, Bishop. We're good shepherds. Yay! Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop. We're so happy you came today. Thank you. Talk to us. Okay, God thank bless you, you all. Thank you, Bishop. Bye bye. 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 Bye he taught us about the Good Shepherd and, and that big stick that he carries. I thought it was for the, when the people were being bad and he had to use it to them. But he explained what the, what the stick is. It's a, a... It's a staff. Yeah, it's a staff. And... And we just want to thank all of you for being here with us. We love you. And remember, be kind and generous. And what do they have to do about their hands, Ellie? Wash your hands and counting the five to three times. Yeah, wash your hands. Wash your hands. And when you go outside, like the bishop said, make sure you wear a mask and stay six feet apart. Okay, girl. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 just so happy. Thank you so much, Bishop Provenzano. And we're praying for you, hoping that you continue to stay well and praying that you continue to lead us and be our good shepherd. Let us pray our final prayers. I want you to know that here at St. John's, we accept all of your donations. We can't do this without you. And we want to walk with you. Church is not open, but God is available. You can call us on our hotline and certainly feel free to send your donations to us um, right here at St. John's the Evangelist Episcopal Church located at uh, 49 Blake Avenue in Lindbrook, New York, 11563. And don't forget to look us up on YouTube and also follow us on Facebook. We love to be in conversation with you. Friend us and we'll keep you posted on what we're doing. Because the church's building is closed doesn't mean God is closed. God is waiting to bless you. All we have to do is simply be available, know his voice, and follow the Good Shepherd. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you've made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by your, by your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that, not, that we may praise you not only with our lips, 
but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are at uh, near the end of our service. Please join us on any Sunday. Give us a call. We will walk with you. We will pray with you. We are here to be with you. Even though the building is closed, Jesus is available. Any time of any day, we will pray with you as we follow the Good Shepherd and the good news for the hope of a new tomorrow. Let us pray. The peace of God who brought again from the dead our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to send your donations and your tithes in to St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church located at 49 Blake Avenue in Lindbrook, New York, 11563. God bless you now and you take good care. Remember, in case nobody has told you today, let me be the first one to tell you that God loves you this morning and so do we. God bless. Amen.